Can yeah. yeah. I call this meeting to order, please? <laughs> this is the November 28th meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals. If anybody's here that doesn't want to be here, now's the time to leave. <laughs> uh, Judy, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Danelle. Here. Perry? Here. Con? Here. Pfeiffer? Here. Also present is Village Planner Denise Sweet. We have uh, two public hearings on the docket tonight. Um, before we start into that, we've got some uh, meeting minutes to review. Um, Stephen and Kimberly, did you have a chance to look at those? Yep. Uh, did you have any comment, edits? No, I'm good. Motion? So moved. And, as, and you know, as long as you are moving to adopt rather than approve the minutes, you can all, if you have read them, you can all move to adopt so we can get a quorum on that. Okay. Do we have a motion to adopt? adopt. I second it. Roll. Danelle? Yes. Perry? Yes. Tom? Yes. Bye. Thank you very much. Do I vote? Yes. Okay. You can, if you're adopting, you're not approved. I will adopt. Yes. Okay. All right, the first public hearing we have is a variant request um, for Dayton Street. Uh, Denise, you want to please run through that? Yeah, this is a two-family dwelling that's going to be on a property that is identified by an ID number right now. It doesn't have a lot address. Um, this, uh, <coughs> according with, to the zoning code, a two-family dwelling requires a total of 8,000 square feet for, for the two units. This property is around 7,500 7, square feet, so they're looking for a spatial uh, variance of 520 square feet. Um, they meet all of the setbacks um, that are required for the lot as well as the parking. Um, this is, um, to me, this is another example of where the uh, zoning code rewrite went through some iterations and edits. Uh, and did not get followed up with a good comprehensive yep. uh, overview of some of the tables, some of the things like that. Um, it would be my assessment that um, Denise is already in conversation with the Planning Commission about editing this. Right. Um, <coughs> and in my opinion, uh, both these applications are, are really similar in the same respect that um, the number of units um, is, is really irrelevant to the fact that we <coughs> reduced the, the size of each dwelling unit to uh, much less standards than what we had originally written the code around. Um, that those particular requirements of downsizing the unit size should then get, get followed up with a per lot square footage spatial requirement for those units, for each unit. So as a result, we still have a 4,000 square foot minimum unit size per lot that is trying to be accommodated for something that fits within the setbacks and fits within the coverage of the lot. And that doesn't make sense. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if, if we can fit as many units per lot as long as we are within the setbacks and as long as we don't exceed the lot coverage, we should be good. And that's the intent, particularly in the high density districts of the zoning district. So I'm kind of of the opinion that, you know, we, um, in a formality, grant these variances and then send, send it back to the planning commission and call it a day. Yeah, I, it, this struck me, yeah, it, like, like the last meeting that we had, this is what we're really adjudicating here is. Uh, a discrepancy from what the zoning code was re-edited and then not not looked at carefully but before it was finally adopted and the planning commission is already aware. I was interested to see Denise is this I'm sorry, is this in both cases? Yeah, they're similar. Yeah, uh, that, that you're in, in communication with the plan the planning commission already knows about this. So like the last one of these we looked at, we were in a position of if we didn't approve this, we were going to force the applicant to wait until planning commission fixed it, which seemed to me gratuitous and unnecessary. Mm 
anybody want to make any other comments before I open it up to the floor? No, I understand. Okay, at this time we'll open up the public hearing. And <coughs> anybody who wants to make a statement or comment uh, regarding um, specifically the application on Dayton Street, uh, please come up to the microphone, state your name. To clarify which Dayton Street one you're talking about. Uh, the double unit that is, oh, you're right, they're both on Dayton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, the, the duplex. That what's identified as 102C. Yeah. Next to the passive house. Next to the green. Yes. yes. Yeah. Got it. Okay, hearing seems oh. yeah. You gotta act quicker than that. Well, how just you know, thank you for others. I waited long enough. Uh, I don't have any problem with Can you identify your name? Oh, I'm sorry. Michael Wilson, Dayton Street. I don't have any problem with the square footage issues or anything like that, but I don't like the thought of any more traffic on Dayton Street at all. It's getting so I want to move to another part of Yellow Springs because I'm hating the traffic. It's my understanding, string me out if I'm not right on this, Judith, that we got new neighbors not long ago and within about three weeks of living there, they backed out and got a car accident. Uh, now, I'm not saying that that's just all traffic, but I'm thinking that's got something to do with it. What I'm doing now is when I need to go eastbound, a lot of times I'm going westbound because it's easier to get out, and then going through the neighborhood and get back on Dayton Street so I can go eastbound. So enough said, the traffic's really a problem for me. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Suzanne Patterson and I'm, I'd like to speak for both of these projects in that um, there's a lot of downsizing in Yellow Springs. Um, our community is becoming older and uh, often parents are wanting to come to be with their children here and, and they want smaller spaces. And so I just would encourage you to um, approve these two, two projects. Um, for that reason, um, and we haven't had any new housing at all. Um, as I say, I've been here since 1972, and I've already downsized, but I, I would look forward to something like this. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anybody else? On this application? Uh, Judith Schimpf, I live right across the street from the property that's going to have four units on it. Um, I looked at the drawing. That doesn't tell me a whole lot. Um, it appears that the uh, house that was built on King Street that is right behind it, that it is back, right up on top of it, um, the parking being in the front, that four spaces, I agree with Mike about the traffic. I have to back out frequently um, and go towards Fairborn and it sometimes I sit there for five ten minutes trying to get out because of the traffic coming Dayton Street is used by more people than just the people in Yellow Springs everybody coming from uh, takes the shortcut down from Springfield um, that want to go the opposite way it is very difficult all the time not just and worse during uh, rush hour um, looking at the drawing of it, um, I don't see how the person that's property is backed up to that. If they're not here, I wish they were here. I'm here. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, I just aesthetically, I think they have other properties they could put four units on. I'm in agreement that there ne needs to be more senior housing, small housing. A lot of people are moving here, in case anybody hasn't noticed are moving here because they like Yellow Springs and they want to retire here. And some of those people are in apartments and small units. Um, being over 65 myself, I have a small house. My house is 880 square feet. Um, and I really appreciate that. 
but I think a different location for four units, I'm all in favor of that, but not that location. On the duplex, that's a better location for, for that. Because, and I walk my dog constantly, so I know a lot of Yellow Springs for that reason. So that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Chris Bongiorno, uh, North Winter Street resident. Um, just speaking in favor of both of these projects, and I'm sure there's going to be another chance to speak on the, uh, the second project on the agenda, but. Um, Echoing the, the sense of the need for more senior affordable housing, uh, the opportunities here with both of these projects for a reputable um, agency in homing to build and manage these projects. Um, and I think we all know people in our close family or friend networks who would benefit from the availability of more uh, housing. And I believe uh, housing in this um, affordable price range in particular for seniors. And I, I believe that this is an appropriate this is an appropriate place for these uh, projects in a high des density residential zone um, close to the center of town where walkability is possible. So thank you. Thank you. Linda Fisher, um, we're talking about something I don't know anything about yet. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. We're talking about something I don't think about yet. I mean, <coughs> people are talking about having seen something on the corner of King Street and um, Dayton Street. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> so can, that doesn't tell me anything either. I saw that. So can we know more first, please? Thank you. Well, um, we're not on that application yet. <clears throat> uh, so we'll just wait till well, we get to that. Let's do one at a time then. We are. Um, this particular application is discussion about a double a two-family uh -huh. residence on a single lot um, on Dayton Street, um, just west of High Street. Um, it's a vacant lot. Uh, it's within Residence C, which is a high-density residential district in Yellow Springs. Uh, the permissible densities on that lot would permit them to do up to four units, I think on that lot. Uh, they're proposing to do two units. Um, the next application is one asking for four units on a single lot, which they're permitted to do. So, not sure, you know, if, if you've read, did you um, look I at... I can see something in the mail, yes, but we didn't talk about this one at all. <coughs> um, even the one, I'm in the house right behind it. Okay. On 99 King Street. Um, which way is that facing? I mean, where well, is it going to be on the lot? That kind of thing. We'll get, we'll have a picture of that next. Okay, thank you. Anybody else on that particular application? Yeah. I'm Emily Seibel, the Executive Director of Yellow Springs Home Inc. <clears throat> and I thought I'd just say a little bit about what this project is. Um, Forest Village Homes is a six unit project on two different parcels in the village. Uh, as you said, Ted, in high density residence C. And we are seeking a relatively small variance um, of density to support the spirit and intent of the zoning code, which is increased density by infill development on vacant lots featuring smaller housing units well under 1,000 square feet um, each. So the project meets an enduring local need for accessible, modest-sized housing, affordably priced for seniors and persons with special needs, and we're going to make sure that it's functionally and aesthetically harmonious with the surrounding neighborhood through both thoughtful design and color scheme. The one-story units on both sites will blend in with the neighborhood, and they're well under the minimum lot coverage requirements also because of their modest size. Um, I think this this one, and, and I, <coughs> Brittany, can, Brittany Persons, our development coordinator, can say more about it, but that lot 102C, I think we're at 25% lot coverage, um, which 50 up to 50% 50 is allowed. Um, <clears throat> and the site locations and the unit designs are really ideally suited to support seniors and persons with disabilities. 
They're all going to be just one to two bedroom units with front porches, zero step entrances, and full wheelchair accessibility or adaptability. They're designed to reduce the risk of isolation and promote resident interaction. There are support services uh, being coordinated, which are already in place to help residents with Medicare enrollment, transportation, and many other quality of life needs. They're on the Green Cats bus route near downtown, and there will all be high quality pace based on passive house design features to promote a tight exterior seal and reduce energy consumption. We're asking for the variances for a couple of reasons. First, financially, um, to do six units in total is more feasible due to economies of scale and the way grant applications are structured. And it's also a way to meet the needs of more seniors in Yellow Springs using our most scarce local resource, which is land. <clears throat> this variance request, we believe, will help the village in a number of ways. It'll generate thousands of dollars annually in new property tax revenue to benefit the local schools. It will provide for over a million dollars in economic development and improved infrastructure. It will leverage outside investments into Yellow Springs and our economy. It will meet local residents' needs and public goals. And the increase in full development and density are in the spirit and intent of the 2013 zoning code revisions. We've already see, received financial commitments for the project of nearly $280,000 in awards through the Ohio Community Development Finance Fund and the Federal Home Loan Bank of Cincinnati for the project. And we plan to go to the Ohio Housing Finance Agency in December for an additional $500,000. <clears> the village has already demonstrated support for the project through waivers. And granting the variances today would make our application more competitive uh, in December. We've worked with Denise Swinger extensively starting uh, earlier this summer, and I'm sure you can speak to that. And Ted, um, thank you for providing your support and guidance also um, to make the design smarter and better and um, help us meet the setback requirements. Um, so I'll turn it over uh, if the public hearing is still open to Brittany Parsons, our development coordinator, and she can talk specifically about the technical um, variance requests that we're asking for. I also just wanted to speak very briefly. I know traffic and safety are an issue. And Michael on uh, Dayton Street, <clears throat> I do want you to know we've talked with Denise and Patty um, pretty extensively about traffic flow, safety, and um, the unit designs as proposed do meet all of the, um, all of the code requirements for safety. And we, we paid special attention to that and redesigned it a few times so that the entrances and exits weren't too close to um, Dayton Street, uh, <coughs> specifically on the corner property, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Um, and you know, we're also happy to discuss the designs with the neighbors to just be as accommodating as possible. Thank you very much. Okay. One question, where, where is Dayton Street on that, on the two unit one? Uh, so why do they bottom face bottom. it out? It's at the bottom of the it's screen. It's bottom of the screen. Yeah. Bottom of the screen. Uh, got it. There it is. Thank you. Can I ask a quick uh, technical question? <coughs> if we approve a variance, is there a, does that come with any sort of a plan? Limit or is it approved in perpetuity? One year? Uh, it's one year. One year. Okay. Um, my name is Brittany Keller. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I work at Home Week as well. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk about um, this project a little bit from my perspective. Uh, we've been working with Denise in the village since the summer, just trying to make sure this project meets all the needs um, and requirements in the zoning code. <coughs> um, just specifically the Lot 102C, um, since it's a two, fam or a two unit project, um, if it was a multi-family unit, it would be 2.4 units permitted on the site. Um, since it's a, with the lot square footage requirement, um, there was a little bit of confusion with that. And so I think you guys have been talking about clarifying parts of the zoning code. Um, like Emily mentioned, the lot coverage is less than 25%, so it's really not taking up any more space than a single family home that would be a little bit bigger. Um, we're meeting the setbacks and the parking requirements. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I know just as a resident of Yale Springs, this is a need as well, so I appreciate 
appreciate it. Very good, thank you. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thanks. Chris Erbuchen, I'm speaking now, just speak, I was only going to speak on the second uh, variance issue, but Emily brought up the fact that this is a six unit project. So I'm speaking now. <laughs> the, I'm all in favor of the housing units. Um, what seems to be the biggest problem is the parking and um, road access to these lots. Um, and that's what I want to speak about on the second variance uh, is the parking uh, is being requested for four cars, the variance for the fifth car. And I would like to have the fifth car uh, included in the second uh, variance that you will be talking about tonight. The only reason I'm talking now is that it seems like it's a project of six units. And so if there's leeway on one unit, perhaps there needs to be leeway on another unit. That is, maybe three units should be going here and three units on the other lot that might address some of the parking issues and the housing issues. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Anybody else? All right, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the table here. Um, does anybody have questions, comments? For me, a matter of clarification, I so as I understand it, it was before, so this is a relationship to the two-family dwelling, mm -hmm. right? And is that what we're yeah, right, yeah, that's, that's what we're and, and so what I understand is the application is for a variance uh, in regards to the square footage, right? And that's that's the limit of the application is for a variance right. Right. in regards to the square footage, right? Does that have anything to do with parking? As I understand, there's no variance, there's no application for a variance from the... No, it fits within the lot coverage, it fits within the setbacks, it fits the parking requirements, it fits as a multiple um, within residency. Um, and like I said before, it's a, to me it's a tabular issue regarding an edit that was done because originally the minimum unit size was 900 square feet or 1,200 square feet, I forget what it was, um, through an action of council and planning commission, uh, through the edits of the zoning code, we reduced the minimum unit size to zero. I mean, it could be anything that you wanted to build, in essence, but none of the tabular <coughs> lot square footages were changed to correspond to those smaller units. So each unit had to have you know, in the old code, it would have had a certain lot size. So okay. Understand. Well, so if I understand this, if if, if this house, or excuse me, this two, two family dwelling was <coughs> four thousand square feet, then we wouldn't be here in relationship to that property. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand. One of the concerns backing out on Dayton Street, I think that's horrible. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's going to be difficult, mm -hmm. especially if there's senior people in there. Because I'm a senior. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> not. Well, that's why I was bringing that up because my understanding that's not before us. I mean, I, I understand that. I mean, I definitely understand that's an issue, but that's not before us, is it? No, it's not. I'm just that's what I, I, I No, I understand. I mean, I, I do. I mean, I. But I, that's why I wanted to understand what the issue. What are I think that's beyond. Yeah, what's I think I in, in, your traffic issues as to this property, traffic issues, parking issues are beyond the scope of this, as, as I understand. Yes. I mean, if, if we're not here, to, you know, if regarding the parking issue or access to parking, if you can accommodate the parking spaces within that lot, how do you do that is up to you. If there were a single family home, for example, with a three-car garage. You have a single curb cut and you could eventually back out of that just like that would be. Yeah. I mean, it, it, but Dayton Street is not an easy street. Mm -hmm. 
but Peyton Street is designated as our major thoroughfare for high density housing. Yeah, that's why I think it should be on King Street. Well, we're, talking, we're talking about a different property. I, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, this, oh, this is Dayton Street. All right. This is I know, but I just think that corner high. backing out in Dayton Street is horrible. I agree. Back in the Starbucks. Well, I see. Yeah, back in is even so. There's somebody right on you. But we're really not here for the merits of the I know. I mean, I, All right. Know, we can hear what we can see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Stephen, you wanna? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. To do what? To mm -hmm. approve this variance request on lot 102C Dayton Street. I'll pass. Second. Very good. Um, Judy, do you want to call the roll? Oh, before we go through the variance question. Uh, uh, we, have to, we have to do our other yeah. car I want to do that on number eight, I can see. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I wish it was. All right. According to, um, we have to consider and weigh certain factors relative to the variance request. Uh, the factors include eight questions that um, need to be um, heard, I guess, or at least uh, documented as to our response. Uh, question number one is whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without the variance. I need a roll call yesterday. Oh, I'm again. So, yes. 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 <coughs> yes. Number two, whether the variance is substantial. No. 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 Uh, number three, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or whether the adjoining properties would suffer a substantial deterrent, detriment, I'm sorry, as a result of the variance. No. Oh. No. No. Number four, whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of governmental services such as water distribution, sanitary sewer, electric distribution, stormwater collection, or refuge collection. No. 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 Whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restriction. I've been there. Yes. <laughs> Abstain. I, I don't know. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Six, whether the property zoner predicament feasibly can be alleviated through some method other than a variance. Yes. 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 Whether the existing conditions for which the variance is being sought were self-created. This is another one that comes up all the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Look at this. yes. Whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantially substantial justice done by granting the variance. Yes. 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 Now can we go? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Mr. Khan, you are moving to approve the variance, variance of 464 square feet from two family dwelling requirements of 4,000 square feet per unit. That is true. That, that's just what I said, wasn't it? I did hear that. And, uh, Perry, did you second that? Yes. All right. Perry, I'm calling roll now. Sorry, jumped out on you. So now I'm, I'm calling roll on the motion. <coughs> oh, yes. Okay. Con? Yes. Piper? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is the second hearing. This is for the property that is on the corner of King and Dayton Street. Do you want to run through this one? Yes, um, this proposed project is to put a four unit single family attached dwelling on this property. Um, the, uh, the language in the zoning code um, of up to 14 units per acre um, can be interpreted many different ways um, and has proven to, to be that. Um, and so um, I felt it would be uh, important to bring it 
before the BZA because, because of, the, of the fact that that is not clear. Uh, up to 14 units per acre, it can be interpreted several different ways. So um, with that being said, the, this uh, four unit uh, dwelling meets the setback requirements, which because it's on a corner lot, it has two front yards, um, which one is on Dayton and one on King, so it requires a 20 foot setback uh, for the building off of Dayton Street as well as, as off of King. Um, it has a requirement of 15 feet in the rear, and it has a five yard uh, setback for the only one side that there is, which is on the east side. Um, the, the parking, uh, normally if this had been a standard four unit um, dwelling, not being for seniors, um, this wouldn't even be here at BCA because it would have required eight parking spaces and that, that would not have uh, looked so good on that property. It, would, it, it probably, most likely, would have been denied. Um, there, there can be a future uh, for parking spaces if need be, but um, according to Homi, this property um, will, will forever be uh, senior housing and or for people with disabilities. Okay. Um. Once again, I think that this is a, oh, it's a cross-reference issue uh, regarding the spatial requirements. Um, I don't think that it makes a lot of sense. This particular lot, for example, could have units that are stacked um, and increase the density on that lot even greater than what they're showing because it's uh, basically a one-story unit that just has four units uh, on the main level, but by square footage analysis that could actually increase these uh, vertically and still comply with four units and double the beds, for example. Um, they're not choosing to do this, so I think the density in the south is, is less than uh, what it might appear because they're a senior. Um, they're they're going to be one, one story. Yeah. Um, anybody have any questions before I throw it over to I did have a question. The um, parking, and I guess what you were bringing up about, because I understand this is going to be used at this point, right? It's going to be used for <coughs> senior uh, citizen housing. So, yeah, right? so they are asking for a variance of one, one parking space. Um, because it's for senior housing and it's four units, that would be five parking spaces. However, um, they're showing a fifth space for future. Um, because when um, the zoning code, when this, during the zoning code update, when they changed residential C up, up along Dayton Street, it was also to encourage uh, parking on Dayton Street, which I think the intent, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ted, was to, by having parking on Dayton Street, because it's such a wide street, um, that would help to slow traffic down. So rather than making another curb cut on Dayton Street that's a dangerous curb cut, um, better to just have them park in the front of the property. Okay. The, and it goes, you know, you were asking a question, more of a technical question earlier about, you know, how these, you know, kind of the duration of what, you know, what, 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 what is the longevity of what we do here. So if we approve this on the basis of the use at this point, um, this variance, right? basis of what we understand is going to be used, that runs with the property, right? I mean, at some point, that property could be used for something other than senior housing, is that right? And the variance would, would, would run with the property to where they, yeah, you could have those in there that aren't seniors? On a practical side, though, the, you know, these are small units. They're like a, you know, they're like an apartment. Okay. Right? So due to the size, you the chances are, you can, you can get two bedrooms in it. got to be a one bedroom. Okay. Um, so, you know, simply by the nature of the size of the unit, that's part, part of the whole small house concept. You know, if you're reducing your footprint, you're reducing um, the use of reliance on the automobile significantly. You know, walkability being a big issue. This is the perfect walkability distance to town, even though it's difficult to some degree. But, you know, as seniors and even as the small units, I think, you know, a car per unit with street parking available street parking is not a big issue. Um, I agree, I would 
prefer not to add another curb cut to accommodate one single car on this lot on Dayton Street, which they could do um, and meet the requirements of the, of the code. But I would, you know, if you put a curb cut on Dayton Street, you're going to take more space than you would if you had a single car parked on Dayton Street. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm also, Chris, I'm, uh, I'm, on page three, um, the parking requirements from the zoning code stipulate <coughs> that should the units revert to general occupancy, the requirements for multifamily dwellings were in so shall were in here. over here. Oh, okay. right. uh, so this is this comes uh, it's 1264.02 in the code. So it says that the requirements for multifamily dwellings shall apply, which would then jack it up from 1.25 spaces per unit which I never understood in the first place, but that's a different matter, to two, though I don't know how you would police that in any way. Um, I think, uh, so, so that is why they showed the eight spaces right. in the future. Uh, understood. But, um, and that could be a provision of the variance that if, if that becomes a problem, and, and you know, then it could be a condition of use if, if there are, if that does become a problem because there is, doesn't seem to be enough parking, then they can come back later and be required to put in that curb cut. <coughs> but, you know, and <coughs> Well, I, I guess, so So my concern, just to sort of piggyback a little bit on what Chris says, I, and, and we're not a design body, um, but it's pretty disappointing that the units get buried in the back and the parking gets put in front, and, they, and what's shown here suggests that we're for additional parking spaces to be put, they would uh, now go along Dayton Street. At least that's the way I'm reading the drawing, which means essentially you've created a bunker of paved over parking lots on this corner lot, which is, yeah. to my mind, sort when, of when, this, when, they, when they first came in my office this summer, no. um, that was of a concern. And so um, I had them play with the design a little bit, mm -hmm. um, having um, and pushing the house up more and having like a uh, an entrance, a one-way entrance on Dayton Street with parking along the back, and then they would exit out of King Street. Mm -hmm. But it just became so difficult for them then to meet all of the other setback requirements because the fact they're on a corner. Um, so to do that, then they would be coming from multiple variances, and you know that just couldn't and, happen that way. And I looked at those plans too, and the reality of it was that. They we covered the lot and they to get the lane to work to view around the corner of the corner. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And it was mm -hmm. it was parallel parking and you know my first thought was, oh my gosh, you have no opportunity for any outdoor activity at all for green space. You know, at least if the parking is consolidated, <coughs> which is you know not a desire, certainly, but it does comply. And you know, at that point we kind of Jump off the ship and, you know. It also keeps the parking uh, away from and out of view of the neighbors on the the one neighbor at the side. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what that address is, as well as the neighbor here that has house sits a little bit back. Mm -hmm. She'll see a house structure, but she wouldn't see the the parking lot. And the reason that they're held back ten foot off the sidewalk is because of the land. So the reality of this is that we could extend the parking area by eliminating the landscape buffer and giving six good parking spots on the lot. Mm -hmm. And I heard something again, I would go back to, I'd rather have somebody park on Dayton Street mm -hmm. and, and walk up if they need a guest parking. Mm -hmm. But that's just, that's just okay. mm -hmm. Kinsley, did you have anything? No. Just the light parking on Dayton Street. Okay, I'll open this up to public comment. Just before you do that, okay, I'm sorry. Could the condition can, can, can the, can the condition be of a kind that if you repurpose it, that it, 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 a simple condition you have to come back before the village. Not that you know, the village is going to act one way or the other, but you just have to come back before the village. Or you repurpose it. I mean, is that a condition you can have? And then there could be dialogue about at that point about what do you repurpose it to? 
what's going to be the park. Okay. Is that, is that and depending on what, if it's just a parking thing that it might go before planning commission, I, I'd have to look at it at that point. But yeah, you know, you never know. They could someone could take that and make it goes that four unit into two. I mean, not. Yeah, I, I, right. I was, I was interested in what you said about the, these are one bedroom units, right? But then I mean, it could be it could be remodeled. I couldn't. I mean, I, I don't. Well, how much is each unit? What's the square footage of each unit? <coughs> how? I mean, six ninety four. Yeah. Six fifty. I remember six fifty. It's over six fifty for sure. But I think it's six ninety four. Yeah, I mean, if you're combined, I can't imagine making you know that square footage if you just take one unit and making two bedrooms and remodeling. Like if, yeah, I couldn't it's imagine a little that. Than a two -car -car so I mean, to, to have two bedrooms, I think you well, you have to combine to where, but then they two units have two bedrooms. They have a bedroom piece at this point, so right. If they combine the two units, they combine with the four. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, that's where I mean, I went through that. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm going to open you. it up to the floor. Anybody who wants to speak, please. Hello. Um, I just wanted to speak specifically to the Dayton Street, uh, 540 Dayton Street, sorry. <laughs> I know we have two here today. Um, I just wanted to again point out that we're meeting the other um, setbacks, which on this one was more challenging due to the corner lot. And I know we really worked hard with the village to make sure that we were putting our best foot forward and uh, making the design work for in as many ways as possible. Um, I wanted to point out that for traffic concern on Dayton Street, the small lot on this project would be entering from King Street, just in case you can't tell from the picture. Um, and then um, we also have grant restrictions that are keeping this as a senior project for the foreseeable future. So it's not something that we could turn around and make not senior or special needs anytime soon. Um, and then I just, um, oh, yeah, that was it. I just wanted to point out the corner setback and our grant restrictions. And um, we, yeah, we really um, looked at the parking from a lot of different angles. Um, like Ted and Denise said, the wraparound parking could have met, um, could have met the parking in a different way, but it would have given, us, it would have pushed the project all the way up to the street and it would have can pretty much covered it in pavement and we're trying not to do that. Hello, <clears throat> Michael Wilson again. I'd like to say that uh, this is a fine idea in principle, but as far as the particulars of the workings of this, I really question it. There's a couple things I question. One is, it seems I heard someone say there's no new construction of homes in this town. I don't think that's accurate. Uh, Thistle Creek is selling units. I don't know if there's any under construction right now. There's a house under construction on Fairfield. There are lots available in this town. There is construction going on, for one. Another thought is, with senior citizens living longer, being healthier, and this is a health conscious village, it's not out of the question that we could have and I'm not saying it's likely, but I'm saying it's not out of the question we could have four senior married couples in there in two cars apiece. <coughs> sounds like a bad news scenario to me. Not likely that that could happen, but it sounds like it's possible. One other issue is it's a full five, six, seven blocks to walk into town on a street with a lot of traffic. I'm not so sure it's all that senior friendly. I mean, you know, I'm this close to senior citizen, I mean, I got a golden Buckeye card, so that saved me at Wendy's, but um, I'm not so sure that that's, that's the way to go for, you know, elderly people that possibly are having a little problems with ambulation. Uh, it seems to me that there, there might be some spot somewhere that's closer to downtown Yellow Springs than the corner of Dayton Street and King Street. As another side note, there are two approaches to the property. There's one from Dayton Street, the, uh, and there's one on King Street. When they came and, and paved the sidewalk, they put an approach in there. So just in case someone doesn't know that, there's an approach 
for the Bulls. <coughs> so at any rate, um, I think Stevie Wonder could see that I'm opposed to this for all the reasons stated. Thank you. Mr. Griffin, uh, I just uh, wanted to repeat what uh, Mr. Wilson said, that there is a curb, existing curb cut on Davis Street where you see that number um, six, I guess. Anyway, the fifth parking lot uh, could be there. That's the existing curb cut that was there when the previous residence existed there. Their driveway was there on the Davis Street. Uh, so there is an existing curb cut. And the curb cut on Dayton Street is a little further to the left than what the picture shows, but that's easily done to cut the curb. But I agree with the number of parking places. You're going to have to have more than just the four. Um, it's a busy corner. The parking on King Street is difficult because there's somewhat of a curve. And uh, so coming. Um, from King Street going south, there's always um, kind of a blind curve coming around the corner and cars coming out of that suggested parking lot. Uh, it, it's just not a safe um, <coughs> access to King Street. I really like the idea of having the circular driveway going around the back of the property because they could have parking then at each unit but I recognize that raises a whole bunch of other issues. I just think that there should be more consideration as to how you're going to handle the cars. Thank you. Okay. Suzanne Patterson. Um, I just would like to address the parking also, but I don't see the problems that are being pointed out. I mean, when you look at this, um, diagram it's a it's a straight shot right at this point on King Street and not only that I think we need to remember that we've got bus accommodation on Dayton Street a bus that's going to run across down the street to town and back and and um, this this is just um, an excellent way for transportation and also bicycles I mean, I'm still riding not a bicycle, but a tricycle adult bike um, almost every day. And um, there's bike path across the street, or you can just use the street. I think that the parking is going to be quite adequate. For another thing, these are so small, I cannot actually visualize that maybe it's going to be for a single person. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but. I think realistically, I think that's what it, it would amount to, um, and that you wouldn't have two cars. I mean, I, I feel like this is more than adequate, and um, and I hope that you approve this. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alex Scott. I'm a homing board member. I just wanted to voice my support for this um, variance in this project. Um, it's already been noted that we've got what seems to be a pretty good chance at a grant, and the fact of the matter is that senior housing, and especially low-income senior housing, has been a need in Yellow Springs for quite a while, and Home Week is seeking to address that. And you know, as has been said, there's there's always some small inconveniences with a lot of things. However, this is a pretty good ideal and has been worked on for quite a while. So I just wanted to voice my support. Thank you. Your hard work. Thank you. Maya. Helen Iyer. I'm one of those seniors who hopes that sometime maybe I can move out of my freestanding house into a small apartment that is on one, one level. Um, I've followed the housing for seniors here for quite a few years, set on boards and so forth. And uh, the gentleman who thinks, why don't we just do it somewhere else, uh, hasn't followed the struggles. I think, <coughs> I, I believe that Home Inc. and the people there are very thorough in what they've done, and that we have to trust. They have tried all manner, as well as 
uh, Mrs. Swinger, who's worked with them to try and make it work so that we finally get some housing started. But it just hasn't happened, and it appears to be uh, only possible if there's some give here in making it work. Thank you. I just really, this is Emily again. <laughs> I just really quickly wanted to point out that um, <clears throat> in the zoning code, there's a max uh, lot coverage of 50% in high density <coughs> residence C. And we're coming in way under that because the units are so small at 31% lot coverage. Um, and we really tried to keep as much green space as possible. So I think there are two different requests before you. And one is to put four units on the site. And the second is a decision about whether you want the fifth parking space or not, which, um, uh, <clears throat> well, I, I think it, I think it makes sense to have just the four spaces. We talked a lot with Ted and Denise and our architect about it. Um, I also am, am sensitive to the fact that there are you know, legitimate concerns about um, traffic flow and, and safety and, and all of those things. So we've tried to be thoughtful about that, but um, you know, whatever you decide, uh, I'm sure will be reasonable. And Kingsley, I did want you to know too that we will look again at the parking on the Dayton Street site that you already approved the variance for. Their original concept plan showed uh, more of a parking area where you could do a turnaround, and so we'll we'll take another look at that. But you, though that wasn't on the table, I just wanted you to know that. Um, and then I just, I guess, I, I would just say that while it's not shown in the site plan, we will have bicycle parking. We have already talked with Green Cats and have an MOU for bus service. We've also talked with the Senior Center and have an MOU in the works for, um, <clears throat> you know, their access to their transportation services. Uh, and we'll have an in-house service coordinator, um, Brittany, who will be, uh, you know, helping to assist with any transportation-related concerns. Um, and I just, I feel like I, it's important that I just point out that for over 10 years people have tried to get senior housing going in Yellow Springs. There, while there is land, uh, getting access to the land to do projects is always a challenge. Anyone who's tried to develop in Yellow Springs can tell you that um, it's a limited market, land is expensive, and there's been a senior housing working group that's been going and carrying the torch independently of Home Inc. And so we're really trying to respond to local needs through the project. So we hope that we're able to put four units on the site. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. What happens when you get a visitor? Somebody mm -hmm. comes to visit you, where do they park? Mm -hmm. Well, I, that's a good question. But um, there's, I think, street parking available. Um, there's also a large church parking lot just across the street. If you have a Provided party, it's and, not Sunday. Yes, <laughs> if it's not Sunday and you had a hundred people over, you could park in the big church parking lot across the street. Um, but I, I, I think that's the uh, certainly the conclusion that we came to. Yeah. Did we'll you want to say park on Main Street? It's raining. It's raining because it floods. Yeah. Oh, Main Street. Have you seen how wide Main Street is? No. But when it rains, and they won't open up after. Okay. Where, where are you talking at? At the corner. corner. At the corner when it rains. At King, on King? On, yeah. on King. Yeah. It, it, wasn't, on down that it wasn't leveled uh, correctly, so it, well, it goes backwards and back backwards. That's forward, also a corners. problem with the, uh, with the storm drain there. Yep. And that is because of the beavers that have been damming up over at Glass no, Farm. not this problem. This problem no, is no. that okay. the storm out. drain. Time out. Time out. <laughs> This is a public hearing. If you have comments, I would ask you to come to the podium and speak to the microphone, and we'll address your questions. Thank you. Emily, uh, I have a, a clarification, if you would, please. If we were to turn down your request for a variance from Section 1264.02 and require that you have five parking spaces, which is what the zoning currently calls for, what would you do? Would you, in fact, simply slap the fifth spot 
in the where the existing and now not used curb cut on Baker Street is and, mm -hmm. and problem solved? <clears throat> we would talk with our architect to see if there was an <coughs> option that was more attractive. But yeah, I mean, if but that's, that's that's the quickest, easiest way to solve the problem, that would which be, is to reactivate what had already been there, already traffic yeah, on Baker Street. Right? I'm not exactly sure the location of the curb cut, so it's next. To it's right about where you've got it located. Okay, yeah, so we would okay. just put a parking space there. Okay. And some landscaping if possible. Right. <laughs> and um, I did want to say, I, no one brought it up, but um, we will be very thoughtful about drainage um, and talk with Jason Hamby and the village to make sure that we're not adding to any um, existing issues that there may be with. <laughs> there, as I was saying before, there's been a concern because of that storm drain there. If you lift it up, it's, it's often has water in it, but he's hoping that like, cleaning out all the debris out of the creek and not having the, 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 sw the swale or creek, or whatever you call it, that storm drain thing over there on the other side of the church, mm -hmm. um, if that's kept cleaned out, that, that will clean out that storm drain as well. I have no doubt that I missed this, but why why not the fifth space? And why 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 the variance? Why not have the space in the design? I can kind of answer that. Um, when Home Inc. had another plan that showed the driveway behind the parallel parking, you know, it, it literally filled up almost the entire lot with asphalt or hard surface. Um, the suggestion to put the parking as it's shown complied with the code except for that one space. And since there was um, the fifth space that was available on Davis Street, my comment was very simply that it would be beneficial to parallel park on Davis Street as opposed to creating to utilize that curb cut and cross the sidewalk back out on Davis Street and I would much prefer to have the car parked on Bay Street to slow traffic. It is a calming, traffic calming mechanism. Mm -hmm. So to me, putting the curb cut in actually created a hazard that we could avoid and still accommodate the code. So I'm understanding it means safety is an issue. Yes. The other is, you know, I don't know if I should bring a drainage. I know that's a, it's a very simple <coughs> subject here, but I mean, you're, you're talking about, you know, you know, less as I mean that was one of the objectives yes. here is less asphalt, right? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. That was other issue. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, I mean it I'm sure that Home Inc. could put that in there. I mean I you know, from my own personal perspective, it, again, it's you know, you've got a curb cut, you can put a parallel parking spot there and keep the sidewalk completely free and open to public traffic, you know, some you know, pedestrian traffic, not have any kind of hazard, you know, going out on the day take up space on Dayton Street, which is really what we would prefer. You know, so that's, that's just my own personal take on the whole issue. So, you know, when they say future, it was, you know, show it as future. If the board deemed that we want to see that space, they could do it that way. They could also add the space in the front, you know, right up to the sidewalk. You know, but preferably, you know, again, it's relative, you know, totally and then the parking to the parking on Dayton Street, are there any issues? I mean, you said you, you know, the, the idea was that rent the parking in the fifth space, you had a few would park parallel. on Dayton Street, you know, parallel park on Dayton Street. Are there any issues with parking? I really haven't really heard that. I mean, mm -hmm. are you able to find a space? I mean, I drive down, I don't know, whether, you know, down Dayton Street, we all do, but I can't it's, say I've ever really paid attention. Is there any issue with parking there? You know, I think personally it's very underutilized as a parking lot. You know, and I know that. You know, just to go into a little planning mechanism, we really try to, the, the new urbanist take on parking and thoroughfare width and all of that is to really restrict parking, you know, constrict traffic, you know, to make it narrow so that people do slow down. They have to slow down. And slowing down on Dayton is like a free you know, It's so big, it's so wide. It's very unfriendly. There's studies, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to argue the, confines of what the rest of the universe is doing, but, you know, it works. It, it's planned. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? I was going to say, I'm over my time, so <laughs> I sat down.
Uh, Judith Shen again. A um, couple of things. I think you could create another parallel parking spot on Dayton Street if you got rid of that curb cut. A lot of people see it and think it's kind of the, and especially now, they don't park there because it looks like it's somebody's right. entrance to a driveway. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely recommend that. You could get two spots, available spots, till King Street there. The water in the street happened when they paved and they dipped it down. They didn't raise it up when they were doing the curve and that, and it's been flooded ever since. And whether it has anything to do with the beavers or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, it's just that storm drain doesn't empty. And so okay. uh, the water doesn't have any place to go. I, uh, but is, the, is that closer to the corner of Dayton and King? Right or at the corner. Right, right at the corner. Right at the corner. Is it on where the sidewalk area is? I'll check on that. Um, but I do have uh, two questions. I want to know how much space there is next to them before this lady's property and behind it for Mike's property. How much space? It's very difficult to see. There's uh, toward the property to the east, uh, there's a five foot setback. This is the behind property. the apartments so this or be, next to the apartments? This would be headed down if you're following Dayton Street into town. Okay. Yes. Mike's property. Mike's property. Right. So five so, feet. Yes. The what is the back the of the building? Is it open out into um, a little patio area and an egress for them to come out? Maybe in a patio? Um, there's a door in the back. The door in the back. So they could store stuff back there, right up against the fence almost. Well, I, I mean, it's just like a backyard for them. Just a little five, five feet. Because at the to corner, the, it's a side. Yeah, to the north, it's 15 feet. And 15 feet then between her house and right. the side of it. Okay, thank you. And just to clarify or to, to reiterate, those setbacks are set in the code, and those setbacks are met in this plan, and there are, and that's not what we're here to, we're not granting or considering a variance for those. Those, those meet the code as, as the code is currently written. And in the original uh, plan, the, there wasn't a back door on these units, but it was a requirement of our code. So they went ahead and had to put in uh, a, not only a front entrance, but a rear entrance. I assume that makes a little fire. Any other comment? Um, I'll close the public hearing then, bring it back to the table. Uh, do you all have any comments, questions? I have a logistical question for Judy. Do we consider these as a package or do we do these in two separate motions? No, two. I think that's what so I thought. Two, two. So we get to read through our eight questions. Yeah. Two more twice. <laughs> do our catechism uh, twice more. Twice. I want to follow up. Yeah, it's two separate yeah. So Denise, I, I did bring up the condition, but then it may have been my oversight. As I understand this table, this is on page three of the packet, this table 12, 1264.0, it, it reverts, right? If, 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 it, if it's no longer used for senior housing, as I understand this, then it, it reverts, I mean, in relationship to this issue of the parking spaces. Then, then, then that would be required to eight spaces. Okay. So they actually show eight, eight there. Okay. I mean, they have that curb cut there, but there could, but I'd ask them to show where they could actually have these spaces. So in other words, as long as it's used for senior housing, if we were to, to grant the variance, then it would be four, you know, four spaces, right? There would be no need for there's the, the variance. variance. The the there's supposed to be five spaces. It's supposed to be five, but we've granted, you know, if we grant the variance, right. there'd be four. If it was repurposed to where it wasn't used for senior housing, then at that point there would be a requirement to refer to this requirement that there be eight, eight spaces, right? Yes, yeah, so they would have to come before planning commission or okay. back to BZA to see about a variance on that. Okay. And they might be able to get a variance on that um, if, if people will continue to park on Dayton Street. Maybe yeah. it would only require two spaces. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, I think that we could do this with a single motion if we wanted to put conditions on one of the two topics. Why we can we can agree that we could grant the variance or not grant the variance of both if 
we're in agreement on both of them. And then if there are issues relative to parking and we were considering granting variance, then we could put conditions on that parking space, such as fix the curb cut so that they are forced to wear so. um, Whatever. I mean, you know, that's not, you know, put, the, put the space in the front. All those kinds of things. Okay. Well, who would be responsible for, I mean, repairing the curb cut? That is, take out the curb cut. If we make a condition, then the zoning administrator would ensure that that is part of the application for the zoning permit. And was then followed up on during construction. But is the property owner responsible for the cost of that? Yes. Oh, there. Okay. Any, uh, okay. I, I have lost it, I think. Um, in the first variance request, which is about uh, spatial requirements, what, what's the figure we're actually being asked? The 464 square feet, is that what you're referring to? Is there, see, the, I, I said in that, I'm not even sure if we have, are required to have a variance on that. Because on, on the multifamily units, it's up to 14 units per an acre. And this is like a little less than a quarter acre. Well, in my mind, I was saying, okay, well, if that would be 3.5 per quarter acre, yeah. you know, or and but then Ted's interpretation is very different from that. Yeah. I mean, his is, it doesn't matter as long as everything else is met. It can be whatever. You don't exceed 14. If you don't, as long as you don't exceed 14. Since it's less than an acre, it doesn't really apply because the density is. So, well, so, so yeah. right. So I guess that's where I'm, I'm struggling. So uh, is I. Do, so do we actually if, need a variance? If you guys determine there is, is no need for a variance on that, then... It's going back to planning commission for clarification anyway. I think it would behoove us to render an opinion to planning commission for the ambiguity by making the statement that, number one, it's ambiguous and that um, it needs to be addressed that we had to grant a variance because of the confusion. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. I guess what I'm, <laughs> I'm, about, to, I'm about to make the motion. What am I actually moving to do? Because it's not clear to me what it is, it is the rule for which we are granting a variance. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little, um, I don't know, a, a little perplexed to, to, to grant a sort of a hypothetical Variance on a yeah. on a kind of abstract right. idea. Yeah. So so that's I guess what I'm I'm wondering. I think that's really pretty valid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the parking issue I get, and we have to deal with that. But before we, you know, that's the second one that's listed here in the uh, in the packet. Well, I guess the board has authority to determine that this is not a variance request; that it is just a technical writing error, and then forego mm -hmm. hearing the variance request. Judy, do you think that's legitimate? Well, yeah, I want some other opinion on this. <laughs> well, my only hesitation is that because there's a, a you know a bit of controversy attached to it. Perhaps you could word it in some fashion that while the board does not consider that, that a variance is necessary if, if the uh, zoning code is read as the board um, interprets it, there may be a misinterpretation of the writing of the code for which the board asks the planning commission to, you know, to, to reconsider that and straighten it out. But because that hasn't yet happened, in, in the interest of uh, caution that the, the body would grant a variance to the alternative interpretation of the zoning code. Uh, Bravely done, saying? Judy. Bravely like, done. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I lost you there and I about the four seconds. Oh, shit. Um, you look like you lost me. <laughs> no, I was thinking about dessert. Um, no, because I guess, I, I mean, so, so the, the issue that I would have, and I'm really, I am not a bureaucratic stickler, as you all well know, but, but the issue I have in, in that direction is that we're giving, a, we would be authorizing a variance for something that might come down the pike after we've granted a variance. 
All right, well, let's, let's try no, something different. That, oh, so that, I'm not hearing I, it that way. Okay. I'm hearing it, there are two interpretations of the way that the code is written. If you interpret it one way, you require a variance. If you interpret it the other way, you do not. And what you want planning commission to do is clarify that in the code. However, the request is not for you right. now. Right. They're leaving on the side of... And so I'm just saying, them. because it is before you now to state, this is our interpretation of the code, you could make that statement and we request a <coughs> clarification from planning commission so that everybody else isn't confused. But because we interpret it this way, we deem that there is no variance necessary. I would just spell it out very clearly if you're mm -hmm. not granting a variance. So that's, that would be the motion, is that we, we do not believe that this request requires a variance. And our, our interpretation well, of our vote is... Let's take a quick poll yeah. vote on the four of us as to whether or not we think this is, in fact, a variance request per our interpretation of this section. And then we can go to whether or not we grant variance or uh -huh. we clarify the Okay, so if I <laughs> we'll understand the code as it is, right? So, all right, so it's 14 units. I'm looking at the first page of the packet, right? 14 units per acre. Yes. Okay. For this, for this uh, district that we're in, right? So, yes. um, so we're dividing this is a, a quarter of diamond is a quarter of an acre. Well, is that what this is? I was in charge. The interpretation is that you just do a map, mm -hmm. right? Problem based on that. My interpretation, and typically the way we would interpret that, is that once you have an acre, you're limited to 14 per acre. Anything under that acreage, if you meet all the other requirements, because it's an in insignificant factor to, to put into the equation. That's what, if it were a beaver creek or you know, a lot of the other zoning districts. So could you have, I mean, this is four units, are you saying yeah, so you, could have eight, you could have eight units and then yeah. it would... But you have to have 16 parking spaces, so there's other things <laughs> in the code that will prevent that from happening. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and that is typical zoning language because the intent, typically you're dealing with new developments. These are pretty, you know, people have a lot of land areas. You know, a, an acre lot is relatively the smallest in some zoning district for multi-family use. Right. So that's where this number, this equation comes up with it. Starts from that acre and goes up. You know, we revise our code to increase density, and this is just a boilerplate factor that they throw into it from those other zoning codes that just doesn't fit within okay. a lot of denser things that we have in the village because we're a denser community. Well, in light of that, as it is explained, as explained to me, I don't think there, I mean, to your poll, I don't think there has to be a variance here. I, I don't either. My understanding mm -hmm. of the of, of the way we were recrafting the zoning was to so have a, a minimum or a maximum number of units per acre. Once you, once you can arrange those on the on the wall, <coughs> any way you'd like, you could stack them one unit, 14 stories high. Um, and because we were also talking, if I'm, you know, my, my fading memory serves me, um, that giving people the opportunity to put more units while also preserving open space by clustering, it's so, so not spreading units out sort of in, in subdivision style, right? That, that this would be a way of both increasing density and also retaining uh, uh, green space, trees, landscaping, and stuff like that. So I would agree. I don't. I wouldn't do the division problem and decide that we needed a variance. That's that's where my vote would come down. I mean, I agree too. I you know again, it's just relative to my experience, you know, and, and you know, seeing that it's not applicable to how we consider the R three district in our community because there isn't any property in the R three district that's near. Right. <laughs> so. You know, that in and of itself kind of throws it off the table for me back to planning commission and I don't think that it's, you know, really applicable on this, in this particular case. Okay, so we have a unanimous decision here that we don't interpret this as a variance request, however. Should we then follow this up with? A, I, I don't see why we need to do that. Go any further than that. I would, I am, 
I can finish out that statement when I write it up, because what I'm going to do is you, you're not interpreting this as a variance request because you unanimously have read the code as a maximum of 14 units per acre up to an acre, not mathematically less than yeah. going downwards. I mean, I can, I can figure out how to word that uh, mm -hmm. coherently, but if that's your statement, then I think that flies. Doesn't matter. I think it, as long as, for me, it's, it's material that's as long as it meets other requirements. I don't know if right. that's yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. Right. 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 I would also say that we would unanimously agree that it needs to go to planning commission for a clarification or a strike out of the, you know, that particular segment of the code just be stricken as far as I'm concerned. The other requirements of the code, parking, setbacks, density, coverage, all of those things are covered. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is just a, an extra thing. Okay. <coughs> so having done that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Just as the, as the applicant, I think it would be helpful for us if we could have something <coughs> Um, to include with our application um, for funding next month. And could we, we told them we were coming in for a variance request and we'd have a decision. Um, so I don't know if I just share this or if... You can share the minutes of the meeting. Oh yeah, I can get you an official copy of the minutes and I'll basically go through the whole decision and result of it. Okay. I know. Thank you. All right, so now we're to the variance request for the parking in our spot. Um, the code states that there should be, there has to be 1.25 spaces per senior unit, which equals by four provided. Um, on plan, it does show a conversion of future parking to uh, accommodate the two per unit. <coughs> it also shows uh, the fifth future phase, it's a little darker on the diagram there. Uh, so I think that it is accommodatable, that's a word. You know, so in, in my mind, I go back to uh, the issue of, I would prefer to see a um, comment from us that the curb be fixed, that we force them to make a parallel space on Baton Street use as opposed to um, a gravel fit table. How much, how much would something like that cost? To fix the curve? Fix the curve. Yeah. Now they're doing, they're cutting the curve on King Street, so you're talking eight bucks a running foot. Okay. 350, 400 bucks. Okay. Yeah, they got black work and they got curb work for doing it. You know, once they're out there, they're not restaging. Getting out of the permits, they're not doing hardly anything. Mm -hmm. you know, you know. I, you know, um, so I am certainly. I mean, you, you know, Ted, uh, that I, I, I'm inclined to grant this variance. Um, I think that I, I, I was never comfortable with 1.25. Anyway. It, it didn't make any sense to me, but I would like round numbers. Well, I, yeah, I'm not so good with the math. You know, I need simple whole numbers to deal with. Um, and um, so, at any rate, it, it, it seems to me that uh, if, if if you want to discourage more vehicular traffic, then you reduce the number of parking places you're giving up. You know, for for these. Uh, for these units, if people know ahead of time that they get one spot per unit, they either buy accordingly or they look someplace else to buy it. It doesn't seem to me, I, I guess I'm not worried about people showing up with two and three cars because it seems to me that's that's their problem. Um, and I think that uh, cutting, in a sense, Restoring the integrity of the sidewalk on that little piece of Dayton Street is uh, is a good thing to do, and, and moving the parking off uh, Dayton and, and taking it onto King Street makes sense. So that's well, my two bits. I mean, to that, I mean, yes, yeah, so moving that that parking to Dayton Street, I definitely agree with that. It, the, the issue I have, and that's why this is why I bring up the cost, is I really haven't heard 
that this is an issue, that people are, are not parking in front of, I mean, it was said, right, just it was said, well, maybe people don't park there, as I understood it. They don't park there because it's this curb cut, but that's all I've heard. So to, to, to have the, you know, to condition this on the property under incurring, you know, 400, approximately $400 to repair this when we don't know if there's really an issue with people not parking there or not because of this curb cut, I, I do, I, I pause, it gives me pause, you know, to think about that. There's, there's some mechanisms that we use in planning where we, sometimes we require an applicant to um, provide a structured gravel base over areas that can be utilized as overflow parking so that they, so that you can grow grass on them, but it's not 12 inches of topsoil. Four inches of topsoil or three inches of topsoil and usually has a gravel base on it. Okay. So, you know, what that does is when it's dry or even if it's wet, you're not going to rut it. Um, but you can park in grass. Okay. And we do that all the time. Um, in, in order to reduce the amount of asphalt and hard surface that, con you know, required, you know, the heat, heat island effect, you know, the, all of the things, storm water management, and all of those things that go into creating worlds for kind of It's a mechanism, it's a consideration. <coughs> to on the table. That's one. Um, doing the, you know, in my mind, um, keeping the pedestrian access open and free of an automobile is desirable as a priority over the car. I, mean, I would rather the sidewalk be maintained and free of a car blocking it potentially or a, Somebody crossing over the sidewalk and park into the grass or the gravel or whatever they decide. I think to force them to, to park on the street on a parallel parking space again is more desirable for a public good. So you bring up, as I understand, you bring up the issue that, I mean, as I understand it, that um, what you're saying is that if the curb cut is there, that may encourage people to park, although there's not asphalt there, they, that may encourage people grass. to park in the grass. Yeah. Whereas if there wasn't a curb cut, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and I would prefer the grass, you know, I mean, that just you know, especially on a denser property like this. But, you know, I think that the applicant demonstrated to me that they can get the future of cars to be converted if they changed hands and this went to two, four single family units that weren't senior accessible. That would be additional, right? Because if then if you have more parking spaces, then there's more cost, isn't there? Because then you have to convert. So if the condition was that you convert that to a, a non-accessible, um, that the curb be restored to, you know, not be cut, right? Be uncut. You would have to cut it again, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay. All right. Interesting. Kinsley. Comments? No. <laughs> All right. Do I have a motion? Well, do, we do, do we do the motion or do we do the... Oh, the we uh, have to do the litany. The, yeah. <laughs> okay. the crucible. <laughs> All right, we'll go through the wicked list. Here we go. Um, condition number one, whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without the variance. Yes. 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 Whether the variance is substantial? No. 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 Whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or whether a joint property would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance? No. 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 Whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of governmental services such as water distribution, sanitary, electric, dorms, or trash collection? But the only question would be, it doesn't matter, I mean, there's going to be access to this property for fire services, for example, right? There's access whether there's a, <coughs> there's a fit space there or not. It doesn't yeah. matter, right? So, um, no. 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 Number five, whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restriction? Yes. 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 Six, whether <coughs> the property owner's predicament can feasibly be a, a alleviated through some method other than a variance? Yes. 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 Seven, whether existing conditions from which a variance is being sought were self-created? 
Yes. Sure. Yes. <laughs> I'm saying that all. Okay. Eight, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Yes. 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 Judy, can you take a vote now? Do I have a motion? Uh, I, I, I move that we approve the variance uh, permitting uh, from, from section 1264.02 and permit uh, four parking spaces rather than five. Do I have a second? I second it. Judy, do you want to take the roll, please? Yes, and you are attaching no conditions to that? Well, that's why before we take that vote, we've had two we've had two points of view about a condition mm -hmm. um, and so we ought to resolve where we feel about that um, I would propose that we make the condition to restore the curve to the curve um, I'm going to pass on that okay <coughs> how we get to that well I'm 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 for a fourth so um, it's okay. We don't have to be unanimous. No, 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 no. But so we've split down the middle. Uh, oh, did you, Kingsley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we have. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Kingsley, you can go with, go with those two. Go <laughs> to the center. Um, <coughs> we can, can, I, can, I, can I ask? Can we open it up again? Can I ask? We can ask the can, can, I, can I say something real quick? Again, um, when let me just reiterate when we when the zoning code was written in 2013, um, the residential C uh, being extended up Davis Street um, at that time, one of the one of the things that was said was that um, they wanted to encourage more parking, parallel parking on Davis Street as a way to slow traffic down. Uh, that area there is very wide. Yep. And there's plenty of places where people people can park. If their grandchild comes to visit, um, around Duncan Park across the street. I mean, there's, there's places like that. So um, I, I think that a curb cut, um, the curb cut that's there. I, I I agree with you. I don't know if that is actually um, preventing people from parking there. I don't I don't know that. But it would be nice to be able to have that, that grassy area and not have people parking there. And the curb cut would prevent that. The restoring, restoring the curb, the curb cut. Curb, I'm sorry, restoring that curb right. cut back to, so, yeah. Because you also have um, uh, certain, uh, I can't, I don't even know what it is, but you can't, you can't park all the way to the end of that corner either. They mm -hmm. have to, Park somewhat back, so they're going to have to park in front of that curb cut. Mm -hmm. Did you? Um, what? Did you? Can I ask a question? I mean, yeah, yeah. Emily, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, he yeah. you knows Ted. Ted's reading the mind, so he knows where I'm going. Yes. So, do you, do you have an issue? I mean, I, I'm not here to be, you know, a protector. Or not, you know, one doesn't want to be protected. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have an issue with uh, the cost of uh, re? re um, Restoring, 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 thank you, restoring the curb to, to its original state without the cut. We we always have to be mindful of development costs, and we did not include that in the development budget. But that said, we do have a budget for infrastructure, and it's early enough that I, I think the project could absorb it in the interest of everyone going home. <laughs> I mean, I, it's my duty to say yes. Of, of course, we prefer not to incur any costs that right. we don't have to incur, but I also don't think it's unreasonable, and I understand. Do you have any issues that uh, issues with parking there? You know, they, people are not parking parallel because of that. I I have not spent enough time on the site to be able to answer that question. Okay. It's not been an any time I've gone you there. You can stop while you're at it. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, I, I've yeah, visited okay. the site many times, and it does not appear to be that's an okay. issue. So, with, with that in mind, I'm going to change my position. So, Kingsley, I don't know what that does. If that has any effect on your position or not. Stand strong, stand strong, Kingsley. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then, condition. 
Who made the motion? Uh, I think I did. Oh. Do you want to amend your commitment? I, I would like to uh, 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 add to my original motion uh, that we add a condition here that the curb on Dayton Street be restored. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Um, Judy, do you want to call the rule now? Please? I would love to. Piper. Yes. Perry. Yes. Khan. Yes. Janelle. Yes. You have to just assign the minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You got to adjourn us. Uh, yeah. uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Um, I look out my window. So no. moved. Do I have a second? Yeah. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.